Where did the Minoans come from? Did they come by ship from a far away land where a big river flows? And if so, would it be the Danube or the Nile? To answer this question, we will look today at archaeogenetics. Nature shapes our genomes like a potter shapes a pot. Wherever nature's hand touches, a mutation could occur, replacing one nucleotide by another. A haplogroup is a set of occurring mutations. For example, the set of mutations shown here could define a haplogroup called U5. If further mutations occur, then the label of the haplogroup is extended by one letter or number. After the green mutation, we may obtain U5A, and after the red mutation, U5A. Any person who belongs to haplogroup U5A1 also belongs to haplogroups U5A and U5. But the longer description is more specific and informative and is preferred to the shorter ones. There are trillions and trillions of possible haplogroups. People with the same haplogroup have a common ancestor with the same haplogroup. More specific shared haplogroups imply a more recent common ancestor. Ancient Minoan mitochondria DNA data was published in two studies so far, the first by Huey et al., and the second by Lazaridis et al. in a Nature paper in 2017. The Philo Tree organization published the new empty DNA classification tree in 2016, and some of the haplogroup classifications had to be updated. This update and the analysis described in this video can be found in our journal paper from 2019. We found that the most specific empty DNA haplogroups were these three at Odigitria Tholos tomb and these 15 at the Haralambos cave. The first is a mostly early Minoan site, while the second is a middle Minoan site from a few centuries later. We start our analysis by finding the closest relatives of the Odigria samples in the ancient mitochondria database AMTDB. If there are several equally close relatives, then the earliest of them is shown. Ideally, the closest relative in the database is from an earlier time. However, we also allow the closest relatives to be from a later time, like, for instance, the U3B3 sample from Nerquin Naver, Armenia, which comes from the Iron Age. Here we use the principle 
of regional persistence, which means that if some haplogroup is found in a region, then there is a probability that it could be found there earlier. Of course, this probability declines the further we go back in time. We would find perfect matches for each of the haplogroups at Odigitria. The one at Spain was added to the database in 2019, so this is a slight update from the one we used in our paper. We indicate samples from Mesolithic European hunter-gatherers using the color blue, samples from the Further Crescent and Anatolia using the color yellow, and samples that have a Further Crescent origin but were found elsewhere using green color. The currently available data suggests that the early Minoans came from the Fertile Crescent. This map shows the closest relatives of the Haralambos samples. Four of them have a Mesolithic origin, while seven of them have a further crescent origin, but are found in Europe. However, all of these samples have undergone some mutations from their Mesolithic origins or since leaving the further crescent. These mutations are highlighted in gray. The currently available data allows the possibility that some middle Minoans came from the Fertile Crescent, while others came from Europe, mostly from the Danube Basin and nearby areas. as shown here. U5 is one of the oldest haplogroups in Europe. It is currently found in regions and groups of people associated with Finno-Greek languages, such as the Sami, the Finns, the Mordwins, the Murray, and the Estonians. This data supports grover kranz hypothesis that proto finno ugric is a Mesolithic language that had a homeland somewhere in the Carpathian Basin. To this we add a new hypothesis. Farmers who had come from the Fertile Crescent acquired a finno ugric language in the circled region. Moreover, from this region they went north, east and south. Archaeologists identified the Corded Ware culture as one that moved north and east starting around 3000 BC. The Corded Ware culture helped spread all European haplogroups to Scandinavia and the Euros. Even the Mezhovskaya culture, which is associated with Proto Ugric speakers, contains similar haplogroups. Suppose that we have three archaeological sites and we would like to know whether site B or C is closer to A. We ask two archaeologists. The first one replies as follows. Represent the data about the items found at these sites by arrays consisting of percent vases, percent plates, percent necklaces, and percent nails. Then find the Euclidean distance between A and B, which is 0 0.0141, and A and C, which is 0 0.146. Hence A is closer to B than to C. The second archaeologist says that A is closer to C 
because both use iron, while B does not. The second answer is better. The first archaeologist lumped all types of nails together and overlooked the important distinction between bronze and iron nails. A similar mistake can be made in genetics too if we group together several subhaplogroups into a superhaplogroup. The problem of such careless groupings is that they disregard some of the available data and thereby risk coming to incorrect conclusions. For example, consider these three sets of haplogroups. Is set B or C closer to A? A data scientist may reply as follows. Represent the data found that decides by a race consisting of percent of H, I, R, T, U, W, and X haplogroups. After obtaining these arrays, we see that the Euclidean distances between A and B and between A and C are the same. Therefore, B and C are equally close to A. As a data scientist, I have to say that it is a wrong answer because it overlooks the iron. While this is a simplified example, this kind of statistics are common in genetics. For example, Huey et al. classified their Minoan samples from Haralambos into haplogroups, which had the following percentages. Similar statistics were obtained for present populations in several European countries. Their statistical comparisons showed some similarities between the Minoans and present populations all over Europe and the Near East. Hence, they came to the following conclusion. Our data are compatible with the hypothesis of an autochthonous development of the Minoan civilization by the descendants of the Neolithic settlers of the island. Let me propose an alternative analysis that avoids this problem. By the way, these three sets of haplogroups are the most specific haplogroups from Haralambos, from the Neolithic and Bronze Age Danube Basin, and the Mesolithic Europeans and Ferdra Crescent samples found in the database. We define the lengths of a haplogroup to be the number of classification levels it contains. For example, I5A1A has a length of 5. We define the common prefix of two haplogroups as the string that they share starting from the left end. For example, the common prefix of haplogroups I5A1A and I5A1B is I5A1. We also define the distance function for an array of haplogroups as 1 over 2n times the sum for each i of the lengths of ai and the lengths of bi minus twice the lengths of the prefix of ai and bi. We prove that this distance function is a mathematical metric in the journal paper. The proof is based on showing that it satisfies the conditions of identity, symmetry, and triangle inequality. According to this distance measure, the distances between the Minoans at Haralambos, the European Mesolithic Ferdal Crescent population groups, and the union of them are 3, 2915, and 2415, respectively. 
These are all greater than the distance between the Haralambos and the Neolithic and Bronze Age Danube-Basin populations, which is only 1615. This indicates a Bronze Age migration of people from the Danube Basin to Crete. The inclusion of the union of Mesolithic and further Crescent data indicates that the Haralambos cave samples cannot be explained by a migration of Mesolithic hunter-gatherers followed by migration of Fertile Crescent farmers. We can also see that the Odigitria samples are closer to Fertile Crescent and Copper Age Spain samples than to Neolithic and Bronze Age Europeans. Since the Fertile Crescent migration reached Spain by 5000 BC, the haplogroup found in Spain may also originate from the Fertile Crescent. Hence the above suggests a migration from the Fertile Crescent to Crete. These results can be compared with those of Lazaridis et al., who concluded that Minoans and Mycenaeans were genetically similar, having at least three quarters of their ancestry from the first Neolithic farmers of western Anatolia and the Aegean, and most of the remainder from ancient populations related to those of the Caucasus and Iran. The Nature paper failed to detect the Bronze Age migration from the Danube Basin to Crete that we showed. The likely reason for failing to detect this migration is because the migrants from the Danube Basin also had a significant Fertile Crescent ancestry. One may ask, what does the Fertile Crescent migrants stop over in the Danube Basin on their way to Crete matter? It matters because if the migrants picked up the Proto-Finno-Ugric language there, then the Middle Minoan Linear A script could be written in that language.